Welcome back to Market on Close. Let's continue the conversation here as stocks stage an incredible rebound in the face of hot inflation figures and real economic risk, according to our previous guest. David Bonson joins us from the Bonson Group, founder and managing partner. So, David, after what you just heard from Colin and thinking about the way you're picking stocks right now, one of the companies you like, Simon Property Group, we know from COVID is having attachments to malls and physical retail. Colin just told us the Fed's going to sledgehammer this economy into the ground. Do you agree? And how do you pick stocks in that environment? No, I don't. I agree that um, the, his conclusion that we're going to head into a deflationary risk versus inflationary has always been the case, that effectively um, the known problem of inflation, particularly supply-side driven inflation, uh, when it corrects, it brings back the real problem that undergirds the economy, which is a lack of growth caused by excessive indebtedness and being treated with a diminishing return of interventions in monetary policy. policy. Mm -hmm. This is the story of Japan for 30 years, and it's really the story of America for all but one of the last 15 years. And I think that that narrative does come back, but fundamentally during a period like that, you need real cash flows. You need less reliance on the promise of overpriced tech. Mm. And things like Simon Property are real assets with real cash flows. And I believe investors are going to find this current entry level to be quite attractive. I like that point. Very well said. So the idea here that even though the deflationary environment we might get to after this period could look more on paper like the low growth environment we got before COVID, it's not going to create the same stock winners, it sounds like is what you're saying. That's right. And it also begs for more monetary unpredictability, which is our big theme. This instability is really the uh, reality of the current monetary regime. People think, oh, they've gone hawkish. But I don't agree. I think they're hawkish now until they're not. And even if people think they get to a higher terminal rate than was previously expected, um, and certainly their rhetoric is more hawkish than it's been, there is a point at which they break something that all of a sudden the dovish Fed will be back. And this boom-bust cycle exasper exacerbation that we've had my entire adult life, that's the normal that we're living in. It's not that it's always dovish or always hawkish. It's that it's unpredictable. And so out of that unpredictability, that's why there's a certain dividend growth theme we want, mm. which is different than relying on growing multiples, growing P.E. ratios. It's kind of like using the duration terminology of bonds to stocks. Totally. We want we want low duration stocks, not high duration stocks. Okay. You like the stuff that's already proven itself uh, that is giving you cash uh, immediately. Uh, and uh, so retail, uh, the mall exposure from Simon Property Group, another company like Lamar. It's actually the first time I've heard of this business. Yeah. Billboard advertising. I mean, uh, this is like as uh, 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 basic cash flow as it gets. We heard the case the other day of, uh, from a guest uh, for IPG Interpublic, another advertiser, but a little bit uh, a different perspective. Uh, why billboards? How does that fit into it? Yeah, IPG is more of a service model of advertising, right. where Lamar is a, a family-owned, publicly traded business, a couple billion dollars of market cap, so it's a small cap company. Like Simon Property, it is a REIT, and it happens to be the only two REITs we own. So there's a tax favorability. Uh, they have to distribute 90% of net income, and yet they have this leading market share in what is a very niche business. I was utterly shocked at how little their EBITDA came down during COVID. You would think them shutting down the whole world would have limited the ability to grow, but they didn't take that big of a hit during COVID. And yet it is growing cash flows and management that is highly aligned with shareholders. I believe the founding family still owns over 15% of the common stock. Wow. Very interesting. And um, uh, Lamar, as we see, trying to, uh, uh, you know, adapt a little bit to uh, a more future style of billboard. But hey, what works, what works. People are driving right now. They're back. So we're on the roads. And before you go, David, you've got a bank pick that's a small cap. Give me the uh, elevator pitch for Mollus real quick. Yeah, Mollus we like because it's not a bank, an investment bank, but not a commercial bank. It's peer advisory. It doesn't have the balance sheet risk. 
It doesn't have all of the capital constraints. It's not rate sensitive. It's M&A. It's sell side advisory. The founder, Molis, was the old head uh, investment banker at UBS. We love these models. Big dividends and big dividend growth. MC is the ticker. All right. There it is. Dividends, cash, and businesses that we can see and feel around us. Uh, David, thanks a lot. Great commentary. Love to see how the stock picks fit into the macro discussion. Excellent addition to our conversation. Thank you. Absolutely. David Bonson, founder and managing partner at the Bonson Group.